Hi guys, and if you're coming from the previous video, welcome back. Now, if you didn't watch the previous video, we just went ahead and we started off a new game and we got some basic production going. So we got some components here going and we got to the point where we could do automated research. Now, I didn't do this at the end of the last video. I just did this in between then and now just to do a little bit of research. That would make it life a bit easier in this video. So I've gone ahead and done my improved logistics system and um, I've done a few other things. Right, so this video is about taking all of this, going vertical and making it easier for us to do mass production or at least just continual production of buildings. Because at the moment it's nice having all the components there, but ideally we want to be able to go and just grab a building and move on and have the system remake it for us. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rearrange these a little bit here. I'm just going to get rid of these and get ourselves set up. And I need to get our steel production set up. Right, so we're set up and ready to go here. I went ahead and got rid of the research. I put a buffer over here for our magnetic coils. Um, and I've also added another one here for our iron. And we've got one here for our steel. And eventually we'll do one for our components here. You might be wondering why I'm using buffers. And the reason for that is that our Mark 1 components can only do so much. We can't really put much down these lines here. So it's all great having a buffer here because that means that we're always going to be able to produce these components when we get a spike in demand. But we're never going to be able to propagate that out to over here because the minute things start pulling out from here, even if we've maxed this out, we can't then refill it. You know, we, we can't just put so much down there that we're not going to have a problem down here. So by having a buffer for this area and then having one set up here, it means that any spikes in demand on the system, we're going to be able to deal with. Once we get to Mark 2 components, that's really not so much of a problem. And Mark 3, you can just throw everything down there. Although I still would only use one line per resource. So that's just the reason I'm building it this way. Later in the game, it's a different game that was a weird sentence to say okay so now before we start building this system what i'm going to do is just talk about these splitters we've got several things we can do with these splitters if we had multiple inputs um so say for example we had i don't know our copper coming in here and our iron coming in here we could filter them out by clicking on this and putting a filter on only iron for example would go in that direction and it wouldn't go off in that direction and anything coming in from the other way would pass across we can also just by not having the filter on have a preferred direction that means that it the priority of this output will be over here and it will only go out there if it can't put anything else out in this direction and we can also do a priority on the input so if we had two inputs of the same thing and we wanted to prioritize from one direction that's just something to keep in mind is when we're going to be passing lines over each other because we are doing one thing per line we can't have nothing crossing over each other we are going to be using that to some effect right so now let's go ahead and set up our lines going out here the next thing i want to talk about with these splitters here is that oh uh, we can actually run several of them on top of each other early in the game we can only go two like this to go over the top of one of these splitters we can um let's go ahead and put another one out here we can Go along here and we can go one, two, three up. And that will let us go over the top, hold shift. Going down to two won't let us go over the first one. But to go over the next one, we don't need to do that. So if we um, just take that back up to three and take a line across there. Now, if we go up to this one, you might expect that we need to go up to six, but that's not the case. We actually only need to go up to five. So one, two. So we've only gone up two from there, and as you can see, we can get over the top of that one. So that's just something to keep in mind, that um, if you're at the point where you can stack higher than that, you only need to go up two from that point. So it goes three, then two, 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 two. So it'd be three, five, seven, etc., etc. But on this one here, because we can only stack too high, we're only going to take our lines too high. And the final thing is, you're going to see me doing these lines three wide. And the reason for that is I want to be able to put these right next to each other and that's the closest you can do see we can't put them any close to each other but if you wanted to stagger them you could just put the lines uh lack of item there we go if you wanted to stagger them you can put the lines too close like that as long as you're able to get past 
the side of the other sorters. But as you can see here, that is the closest you can go. You can't go directly down the side of it. They are too wide. Okay, so let's go ahead and start doing this. So we're just going to take all of our lines up and we're going to try and get our lines going up one and then one three higher on each one. And we've got to be careful, we have got copper up there. So uh, once we do this line here, we'll have to shift over a little bit. So let's pull out our first line here. Um, let's pull out our iron because we know that what we're going to produce is definitely going to want iron. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And let's just get our steel going up on top of the iron. So it's going to raise it up one level to there and then just raise it up to three there and we'll just run that along. Now let's pull in our um, chips here, our circuit board. So we've got one, two, three wide there. So it's just going to get rid of that. And we'll take that out to there. And then we'll pull this one out the same. We'll pull, take that up to two. And then we'll make that go up to three and follow along the line of that. Right, and now it's going to do the same down here. Right, that's our line set up here. Now, before we do this, there's one other thing I forgot to talk about with these splitters. Um, this is, we have several ways we can put these out. We've got just the plain old four-way. And then we've got this one here, which is quite useful when you end up in the three-high system. And you've also got this one here, which allows you to go... Obviously, the same material can come in and go out like that. So we can have material, for example, on this top level and bring it out one below. And that's particularly useful is if we've got, say, one on this top level here, like, and it was coming in like that, well, we can keep it at that level, and then we can pull it across here, for example, too high. Oh, it won't fit over there because I've got that slope there, but we can put it over there too high, and we can go underneath the other lines. And if need be, you know, if we've got a line up here that's trying to cross over, well, we could have two of these together. Um, so the bottom one would be that, and the top one would be that. And then we could have these lines still going forwards, and we could still pop out from the side like that. That's just one of the reasons it's quite nice to do it this way. It means you don't necessarily have to stagger things, or it reduces the times you have to stagger things. There will be some instances where you've got too many things trying to go across at the same point, and you're just going to have to sort of bump one out a little bit. Right, so now we're ready to go. What we're going to do is everything here uses iron. It uses iron, cogs, um, magnetic coils, or circuits. But only some things use the cogs, but almost everything uses a circuit or a magnetic coil. And I keep saying cog, I mean gear. So we can have a line of gears going around the back here, and then we can have three lines going in the middle. That would be our iron, our circuits, and our magnetic coils. And we can run everything off of that and just have the ones that need the gears up the top here. Let's see how high we need to be here. Um, we don't need to get up to three. You only need to get up to two because of that ability to drop down. So go up to two there. So we can get there from there, no problem. Uh, can we get there from, say, here? One, two. No. So we'd have to go from this point here. One, two. That would allow us to go in. Okay, right. So we'll just build beyond that point there. So um, we're going to want our gears, and but everything else we're going to want is going to be on the bottom here. So we'll just build back here. So that's the line of where we want our gears coming out, like that. Let's go ahead and set up our production. So I'm going to set them up like this. I've got one of these here with a space enough for us to actually put out our um, sorter into there. If it was closer, we wouldn't be able to do that. And then I can put the next one right next to it like that and do the same all the way along. Okay, we're set up there. I've got our conveyors, assemblers, wind turbine splitters. And at the very end here, I've got the mining machines because they also need the gears and they need everything that's over here as well. 
all of these are set to an appropriate storage so I only got one stack for example of the splitters but I've got two stacks of the wind turbines wind turbines wind turbines uh, one for the assemblers and two for the conveyors now let's go ahead and pull these things off so this one here be more appropriate for us to have them in the middle so we go do this here and we will go ahead and put out our splitter so this one here we just want a four-way and this one we want a high to low one so let's pull in make sure we've got this done right so we just pull that up one level like that uh, okay kind of bulked that up a little bit put them a little bit too close uh, we'll fix that later on that's what I meant to do. I mean, that was my plan all along because it looks cool, right? Okay. Right, now I need to connect up this. And now we need our iron going across here. We can go ahead and put some splitters here for the iron and the circuits. And this one here, we're just going to have to bump up. This is one of those situations where we've got multiple things crossing over on the same line. So we're just going to show you this here. We will put in our... Oh, did the wrong thing for the iron there. Now, I could just raise the iron up and not use as many splitters, but I think this looks a little bit neater. And this one's going to be a high to low one there. Ah, come on. There we go. And it's important when you're doing this to make sure that you only do one resource first. Otherwise, it's just going to end up with multiple things on one line. So once I've built this, I can set my filter to iron in this direction. And now I can safely pull in what's going from this direction here. And now we can go ahead and grab this and pull it out. Take it up one level. And we can just take it around the outside of that. Like that. So we're never going to not have anything crossing over, but eh, that looks quite nice and neat. It's not really a spaghetti city. It's just, this is how it works. Um, this is how, this is the best thing I've found that works. I'm sure other people will come up with better ways to do it. All right, so now let's just get all these connected up and we will be producing buildings. There we go. So this is the example that I was talking about earlier on. There is not enough, when we start to produce things, there's not enough coming down here that would be able to provide for this. But by having this buffer here, let's just go ahead and put those in there, that's actually stopping this from all slowing down. So we're dealing with the spike quite nicely there. Once we get to faster sorters, which we can do a lot earlier than we can do faster conveyor belts, we will be able to really deal with that. So it's going to be a little bit of a slowdown here, but it's not too much of a problem. Let's see, we're already producing things there, and I should probably put an output on these, shouldn't I? And that is everything producing that we can with this current setup. We need to go ahead and get some stone to produce these two things here, which is our storage and our smelters. So I'll do that in a moment. But as you can see here, we are still, yeah, it's still handling it not too badly, but a little bit of a loss there but not bad for mark one parts i feel and now i can go ahead and get rid of some of these up here so we get rid of that we'll get rid of that and that and i can throw a buffer on there can i squeeze it in there probably not oh no it's gonna let me yay and i can throw a buffer on here as well And I have no idea why I've connected them up like that. There we go. Right, so I'm just going to go ahead and get the stone over there. And we can bring that round the back here. And then we can just run that onto our line that we've got there. So, guys, I got the stone production built. And I decided, you know, before I finish doing the video, I'll just show how easy it is to go ahead and throw some research on there. I thought, while I'm at it, I might as well do a little bit of research. You know, get myself some foundations and one thing led to another yeah so as you can see it's very easy to complete this system or continue this system so i've gone ahead and i've started making foundations um 
I've extended out and started making these because these use the same things on this line. And over here, I've started making my, what are these exactly called? These are called wireless power tower. That allows me to charge my mech and sort of do much longer distance, which means that when I invariably decide to rebuild actually on the equator, it'll be a lot easier for me. But as you can see, it's very easy to do. Um, all I've done here is I pulled the stone in. I used the stone for my smelters and my storage. And I pulled the store at uh, the store, the steel in from over here that allowed me to do that. And then on this side here, I brought the glass in. And um, the glass is produced into here, which goes into this. This is produced into here, which obviously goes into here, um, which I haven't set up, or maybe I have, it's just using it. And then that goes into here. So we've got a nice line going along there. And over here, you can see there's some other ways in which you can use these four way splitters. So I've got my stone coming in here and to make it a little bit neater I've got the stone coming up through there and then up here it goes up another level and it can use this just to bump up one level a lot quicker. And obviously I've got my steel coming off down here and underneath there and then these ones here these are probably going to be a new line. Uh, what do I need? I've got three there. So eventually when I get to the research where I can have three of them, I'll just have three of them going up there. But I don't need them right at the moment to do my next level of research. I need oil and I need hydrogen and I need graphite. So that is going to be the next video because that is a different way of making things neat and balancing them. But hopefully you've had a, sort of a good idea of how this can make your life a lot easier. It's not confusing at all. You can easily pick out what line goes where because you know all your lines are coming down here. If you can manage to squeeze one onto a line you want to build, then you can do it. If need be, you just take another line off. I've decided to put components and buildings all in the same bit here, but you could say, for example, take components off one side, buildings off the other. And it really hasn't taken that long. Um, a lot of this time here was me sitting there going, okay, I'm going to finish up the video, but I'll just do this. I'll record a little bit at the end of the video. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'll do this before the end of the video. Right, I'll record the end of the video. Right, and I'll just do this before the end of the video. That would be a good demonstration. Right, I'll record the end of the video. <laughs> right, so I don't know if this is actually going to be the last recording of the end of the video. But I hope you guys have found this useful. I hope you can see the merits of doing something like this. And if you've been having trouble with getting things organised, hopefully this will help you. Right, guys. Like I said, hope the video has been helpful. Have fun, hope you're enjoying the game, and the next video will be going on to tier 2 research and what needs to be done to make that nice and organised. Take care.